Hey guys, let's take a look at what's called rational equations. Well, we know what an equation is, right? Okay, it's just you solve for x, there's an equal sign, which is different from an expression, which is just something you simplify and you mash all together, and there isn't really an answer, you just kind of simplify it, okay? Rational is a long word. The, the base of the word is ratio, which is another word for fractions, okay? So anytime you see the word rational, that means it's written as a ratio, or in other words, as a fraction, okay? One fourth. Uh, 23 over 5, uh, even 7, uh, that's a ratio, 7 over 1, right? Okay, so, but we're used to doing 7x plus 9 equals 12 or whatever. We're going to do this with fractions now, so let's take a look at a few of these, okay? And there is a clue and a hint on how to do these, and which is, won't be surprising to you if you've messed with fractions a lot. They're always telling you to find the common denominator, okay? Common denominator, common denominator, all that kind of stuff. Well, you will not be surprised to learn that we will solve these rational equations by finding the common denom i ne term. Okay. And that's it. You have it. Okay. So let's find it. Copy this down. Pause it if you need to. All right. And what we're going to do is take the entire thing and we're going to multiply the entire thing by a common denominator. Now, you should know, uh, you know, if you get stuck or something, you can always just multiply all three of these numbers together and you'll get one. It'll be a giant number bigger than it would have been, but you can do that if you want to, okay? But noticing 2, 4, and 6, you should recognize that that's going to be multiplied by 12. If you want to help yourself rem remember what you're doing, multiply it by 12 over 1. You see, you can kind of get it straight in your mind what you're doing, okay? Well, we're going to take this one first, okay? We're going to multiply by... You know, 12 over 1. Well, y times 12 is 12y. 2 times 1 is 2. Okay? Done. This one next. 12 times 1 is 12. 4 times 1 is 4. Done. All right? Equals. And this is the last one. 12 times y is 12y. 6 times 1 is 6. Okay? All right? Let's do the division to get rid of all these uh, denominators here. So 12y divided by 12 is, excuse me, by 2 is 6y. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 12y divided by 6 is 2y, right? Okay. All right, and we'll just move this 2y over here, which gives us 4y. And we'll move the positive 3 over there, which gives us negative 3. And we'll just divide by 4. And there we go. There's our answer. y is negative 3 over 4. Okay. All right, try another one. All right, take a second, copy, you know, pause it if you need to. All right, same old thing, 7 times 2 times 3. I mean, what what do 7 and 2 and 3 all go into? There really isn't anything to do other than just to multiply those three together. So 7 times 6, we can call it, we know that's 42. Now, you know, it doesn't matter to me, whatever is better for you. You can put 42 over 1 uh, in the front or in the back, I, you know, who cares? You know what, in fact, let's just do it in the front. There we go. Okay. All right. Well, let's take a look. We can uh, go ahead and do 42 times 2x. That'll be 84x. 1 times 7 is 7. Done. All right. We had a minus there. So 42 times x is 42x. 1 times 2 is 2. That's right. I always forget that one. Okay. Done. Equals. All right. 5 times 42, that's probably not one of your times tables, but you can go 5 times 40 is 200. 5 times 2 is 10, so 210. And 1 times 3 is 3. Okay, let's do a little quick division here. 84 divided by 7 we know is 12x minus 42 divided by 2 is 21x. Okay, equals 210 divided by 3, that's just 21 divided by 3 with a zero. And there we go. Okay. All right. So a 12x minus 21x is negative 9x equals 70. Kind of a weird answer. Divide by negative 9 and there you go. Okay. Done. So x is equal to 70 over negative 9. If you just want to write it this way, negative 79, that's okay. And there you go. All right. We'll try one more here. All right. Take a sec, copy this down. Okay, two things that are weird about this. First thing is this doesn't really have a, you know, like a fraction like the others do. 
but just make it a fraction. Make it over one. Second thing is this thing is kind of funky looking with two little terms uh, in this numerator. So, okay, <clears throat> we already know if this works, it works. So do the same thing to, to this stuff too. So two and seven and one, of course, that's going to be 14. All right. Okay. Well, let's do this one first. Here's what I'm going to do very quickly. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and take a couple of steps together on this one. Okay. Because if we go 14 times something and then divide by two, think about this. If you're multiplying by 14 and you're dividing by 2, what are you actually multiplying by? Multiplying by 14, divide by 2, which means you're multiplying by 7, right? 14 divided by 2. So I'm just going to go 7 times 3y on this one. Now, if you don't like this way, go ahead and do it the old way. If you did, you would get this, you know, 42y divided by 2 or something like that, which is fine. That'll eventually do the same thing. We did in the last couple of pages there. So, okay. So, but I'm going to go ahead and go, okay, I'm, if I'm multiplying by 14 and divided by 2, I'm actually multiplying by 7. 7 times 3y is 21y. Now, look at that. That's going to give us 21y too as well, right? Okay, done. This one, I'm going to hold off. You know what I'll do? I'll go ahead and say it. If we're going to multiply by 14 and divide by 7, what are we actually multiplying by? 2, right? Okay, so let's just go ahead and do 2 times 8 minus 4y. We can take an extra step on that. Okay. And this one is if we're multiplying by 14, we're dividing by 1, we're multiplying by 14. So 14 times 3, well, 7 times 3 is 21. So twice that would be 21 times 2. There we go. Okay. Let's just go ahead and keep going. 21 and then negative 2 times 8, negative 16. Negative 2 times negative 4y, positive 8y. That equals 42. Okay. All right. Well, let's try 21y plus 8y, 29y. Let's move this over. 42 plus 16 is 58. And lo and behold, 58 divided by 29 is 2. And there we go. Okay. That's it. And you can always check these. Let's just do it for the heck of it. Take 15 seconds and try it. All right. We say the answer is 2, right? But let's just put 2 in there, right? What is 3 times 2? 6. 6 divided by 2? 3. So this part turns into 3. All right? Well, we say the answer is 2, right? So 8 uh, minus 4 times 2, 8 minus 8 is 0. 0 divided by 7 is still 0, right? Well, is 3 minus 0 3? Of course it is. Just proves you're right to do that. Okay. All right. Try one more. Take a sec, copy down. Now we're having a lot of fun. Okay, we got two of these you know, rational terms with uh, you know, more than one term in the numerator. So let's go back to 4, 2, and 10. Now again, you can, if you want to, do 4 times 2 is 8 times 10, 80, and just use 80. That'll work. You'll do extra work at the very end to get rid of it. But you should probably see that not only could it be 40 that all these go into, actually it could be 20. 20 works better, that's the easiest one. So let's use 20 instead. And if you want to write over one, feel, feel free to do so. Okay, let's take care of this first, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and use the uh, shortcut way. If I am multiplying by 20 and I'm dividing by four, I'm actually multiplying by five. So I'm gonna go five times x is five x. Five times positive one is positive five, and I'm done, all right? And let's work on this one. If I'm multiplying by 20 and dividing by 2, I'm actually multiplying by 10. Negative 3 times 10 is negative 30. Done. That equals. All right, same thing. If I'm multiplying by 20 on top, dividing by 10 at the bottom, I'm multiplying by 2. So this is what I'm multiplying by 2 by, both of those. So 2 times 2x is 4x. 2 times negative 9 is negative 18. There we go. We know how to do this kind of equation. Really, that's half of, I don't know if it's half, but it's almost half, like 75% of what we're doing a lot of this year is taking these weird new looking equations or problems and making them look like something you've already done before. Now, if you saw this, for example, in your book, you would go, yeah, I can do that, no problem. So all we're doing here is taking a couple of steps and you know, plop it into a form where you recognize. So, all right, so let's go to the left is five X, five minus 30 is negative 25. Uh, 4x minus 18. Okay, here we go. 
And then let's see here, 4x goes over there, 5x minus 4x is just x. Uh, negative 25 turns into positive 25, and then 25 minus 18 is 7, and there she blows, x is 7. Okay, all right, if you want to do something fun, and you're not at Disney World, you can always put your uh, answer back into your original problem to see if it works. Okay, all right. Try A, pause it and try practice problem A. Okay, I'm using 12 as my common denominator, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this first, and I'm gonna go ahead and just use the shortcut each time on these. If I'm multiplying by 12 and divide by four, that means I'm multiplying by three. Three times Z is three Z, done. This one, if I am multiplying by 12 and dividing by 3, I am multiplying by 4. So negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Done. Equals. If I'm multiplying by 12 and dividing by 2, that means I'm multiplying by 6 times z is 6z. Okay. This is weird. Okay. Anyway, 6z goes over there. I got 3z minus 6z. 4 goes that way and becomes a positive. So that's going to be negative 3z equals 4, divide by negative 3, and then there's your answer. You can call it that. Of course, the book might have this, the whole thing may apply to negative 2, because a positive divided by negative is a negative. Okay, pause it and try b. Okay. If you're thinking what I'm thinking, you're thinking about how much this problem resembles just the pure joy of like a giant ice cream sundae or something. Now, I understand how you're feeling. So let's plow through it like that. Okay, so three, two, eight. What's the common denominator? You could have done 48. It could, of course, you also could have done 24 because all those go into 24. All right, so we'll do 24 over one. All right, let's try the shortcut way again. 24 I'm multiplying and dividing by 3 means I'm multiplying by 8. I'll go ahead and just leave the part up there the way it is. Minus, and I've got a multiplying by a 24, divide by 2, which means I'm going to multiply by 12. 12 times negative 5 is negative 60. Done. If I am multiplying by 24 and divide by 8, that means I'm multiplying by 3 times 2i minus 4. Now again, there, what you've done is make a weird look at new kind of a rational uh, uh, an equation into an oldie that you've done before. So 8 times y is 8y. 8 times 2, boom. Okay, done. 3 times 2y, 3 times negative 4. Okay, so this, let's see, 16 minus 16 is 44, so it'll be negative 44. And it's 6y minus 12. I want to pull this over there, that's going to be a 2y. This positive 44 will go over here. 44 minus 12 is 32, and that'll be 16. Okay, so let's just check it just in case. Um, I'm gonna, oops, let me erase this real quickly. I say the answer is 16. I could be lying though. Okay, so let's put it in there. 16 plus 2, and then, oop, 2 times 16 there. That should all work. Okay, 16 plus 2 is 18. 18 divided by 3 is 6. Done. Minus 5 halves? Okay, well, that's 2 and a half, right? Well, just, let's just put 2.5. All right, equals. 2 times 16 is 32 minus 4. 32 minus 4 is 28. 28 divided by 8 is the same thing as 14 over 4, which is the same thing as 7 over 2, which is the same thing as 3 and 1 half, right? Is 6 minus 2.5, 3.5? Yes. There we go. We proved it's right. Okay. See you all next time. Take care.